why do you think the figure of Christ is central both to the Muslim faith and the Christian faith? And what do you think that says about what we share in common? Because I really don't understand that. It's a mystery to me. Okay, uh, so Jesus. Hello guys, you're welcome back. My name is Okumi Bikekra and thank you so much for clicking. So we are going to be checking out this video titled Jesus Cannot Be God According to Islam. So this will be an interaction between Muhammad Ichab and Joda Petasi. So let's check it out. I've read all your books and I even read some of your peer-reviewed work. Because when I was going to speak to, to you, then I said, you know, what? I'm going to do my, my homework. Yeah. So I read everything. One of the things that you said one time in The Maps of Meaning, you started off the book by saying, when you were a young lad, I don't know how, how young you were, you said that you found the doctrines of Christianity incomprehensible and absurd. Yeah. And you also said that you found you had some kind of issue with Christianity because of the Genesis narrative and how in incongruent it was with scientific narratives. You went to a pastor, you said, or a church cleric yeah. or something, and then you left the church. Now, I've got yeah. a question. Do you still have the same position or have you changed your position? Well, I've changed my position a lot. I was only 13 then, you know, oh, and I, okay. was, I was caught up in, in the battle, you know, to, insofar it was manifested in me when I was 13. I was caught in the battle between enlightenment rationality and mm. traditional narrative belief. Yes. I had yes. no idea how to reconcile those two things. Do you, do you feel like you can do that now? I'm doing my best to reconcile. So let me be yes, more and I think, yeah. well, I certainly can do it a lot more than I did when I was 13. Let me give you an example, right? This, this point, when you were 13, I think you were thinking straight. I'll be, I'm sorry to be very straight. <laughs> let, let, for, it's hard to believe yeah, that yeah, someone yeah. is disagreeable with you yeah. as you no, would manage you were, that. Yeah, because someone with an IQ of 180 or whatever you have, yeah, someone of your intelligence. When you were when you were 13, you probably had an IQ of I don't know 120 or something, yeah. So you was you were operating like my friend over here, Ali Dawa, so it's on his level. Well, at the age of 13, but what I was gonna say was that you know the reason why I think you were because look at the Trinity, for example, look at the schisms. Now this goes to your specialism, that the idea of three all powerful entities that Jesus is all powerful, that the Father is all powerful, the Son is all powerful, and the Holy Spirit is all powerful. But there's not all what uh, there's not Three all powerful, there's one all powerful. You have one ultimately willing being, which is a person, which is Jesus. And then another person, which is ultimately willing, which is the Son. The Quran says about this it says, In chapter 23, verse number 91, it says that Allah has not taken any son, and he, does, he did not have any creator with him. Had that been the case, they would have stripped one another for what they, they would have competed and tried to outstrip one another for power. Meaning this idea of three all-powerful persons is unintelligible to say the least. The idea that Jesus Christ exhibits two natures, for, I know that there are schisms and there's differences of opinion among Christians, but the, the fact that you have this human nature where Jesus is walking and he sees the tree and he can't eat from the tree, he doesn't know that the tree is in season or not, or that he doesn't know when the hour is, or whatever it may be. The Quran says it very clearly. Him and his mom used to eat food. This proposition that they are limited and unlimited at the same time is it's a contradiction. It's an affront to logic. That's it, this will cause you cognitive dissonance. Because if you want to be a rational actor, and you want to See, be... See, that's the thing. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to be a rational actor. But you do when you do your scientific experiments. That's true. So why do you, why do you separate the two things? Because rationality should be subordinated to something above it. And I'm trying to subordinate myself to that. The Bible is a root of wisdom, inspiration, and spiritual nourishment. The Hallow app empowers you to explore the Bible's profound teachings and to effortlessly incorporate them into your daily life. A great place to start while you deepen your understanding of the Bible is to check out Father Mike Schmitz's Bible in a Year, available on the Hallow app exclusively for brief daily readings and reflections. Here you can dive into an extensive library of Bible reading plans accompanied by insightful reflections and audio-guided meditations. Whether you're a seasoned Bible reader or just starting your journey, Hallow provides a platform for you to engage with Scripture like never before. Studying the Bible's literary brilliance has influenced countless writers, poets, and artists throughout history. By studying the Bible yourself, you'll gain a deeper appreciation for the power of storytelling, symbolism, and metaphor, enriching your understanding of literature across different genres. 
the Halo app also helps you connect with a community of like-minded individuals sharing experiences, insights, and encouragement along the path to spiritual growth. Download the app for free at halo.com slash Jordan. You can set reminders and track your progress along the way. Enrich your education and nurture your mind and soul today. Download the Halo app at halo.com slash Jordan. That's halo.com slash Jordan for an exclusive free month free trial of all 6,000 plus prayers and meditations. And so my, my reaction to what you're saying um, mm. is that it's an in, this isn't an insult. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm telling you what my reaction is. Please say it's it. not, It's yeah. not even a criticism. Of it's, course. I find the discussion, that discussion, as soon as it started, I found that less interesting than what we were doing before. It was harder for me to focus okay. on. And right. I, I think the reason for that is that it, it, it transforms to some, and I'm not saying this isn't necessary at some okay. times, but it transforms the transcendent into something like an intellectual and propositional discussion. And so in okay. some sense, we're debating perhaps not the fine points of theology because yeah. they're more like the blunt points of theology. Yeah, yeah. But there's something about that that there's something about that that isn't what I want to do with you. Yes. You know, and it isn't that it's not necessary. So let, okay. let me flip right. it around right, to right, some right. degree. So one of the yeah. things I'm very curious about is obviously the figure of Christ is okay. Okay. contentious. Yes. And so the Jews don't know what to make of Christ yes. in some fundamental sense because he seems like the last, he seems like an, what would you, a continuation of the prophetic tradition in yes. some real sense, plus he was Jewish, so that makes things complicated. And then, mm -hmm. of course, the Christians put the figure of Christ as, as central in some real sense, but that begs the question of the relationship between Christ and God. And then in the Muslim community, Christ is also a central figure. And so I'm curious about that. And we could say we have doctrinal differences about what constitutes that centrality. It's like, Fair enough, and I would also not say that I understand what that centrality means. Mm -hmm. like, so one of the ways I would understand that, let's say, is that in, in the Western tradition, and I don't know to what degree this is true in the mm -hmm. Muslim tradition, one of the attributes of what Christ is psychologically is the logos. And so if we're engaged in dialogue, which is, dual logos, yeah, yeah, yeah. then we're embodying the spirit of something like mutual enlightenment. And that's then the presence of that spirit in the, in the genuine confines of temporal reality, right? It's something like the infinite descending to the finite to illuminate us. And to the degree that we can have a dialogue in good faith, which mm -hmm. is also a religious notion, then we can engage in that process of dialogos, and that transforms and redeems us. And then what I say, well, do I believe that? I say, well, it isn't just that I believe it as a proposition. It's that I can tell when it's happening. And so can you, I think. It's like, you're going to see that this conversation will ebb and flow, you know? And yeah. some of the time it's going to grip you, you think. We're at the heart of the matter, and sometimes yes. your attention's going to wander. Your attention's going to wander when we're off the path. And yes. so I would say that yes. to the degree that you and I are communicating, this is a religious way of thinking about it, is that we're doing our best to embody the spirit of the logos. And if that's working, then we're making progress. And I know that in the Western tradition, that's part of what has been conceptualized as the fundamental attribute of, of the figure of Christ. And I know that Christ is central in the Muslim tradition. And so one of the things I would want to know is yeah. not how we differ doctrinally, yeah. because I don't even think I'm qualified to, to so debate you got, on that we've case. Got, we've but, got the guy here. Well, Jonathan <laughs> might have some things to say, but, yeah, yeah. but what I would like to, yeah. to know instead is why do you believe that the figure of Christ is central in some sense, or maybe I've got that wrong, although okay. I don't think so, why do you think the figure of Christ is central both to the Muslim faith and the Christian faith? And what do you think that says about what we share in common? Because I really don't understand that. It's a mystery to me. Okay, so Jesus Christ, if secular historians will look at him and differ on his existence or not. The majority, to be fair, do believe he existed. Right, the even secular historians, atheists and agnostics and whatever it may be, right? It's the simplest explanation. Yeah, it's a simple, of course, yeah. So I believe that, first of all, Jesus Christ existed, which in the modern age is worth noting, right? Mm -hmm. Muslims actually, be, Muslims are the only other major world religion who believe in uh, Jesus Christ. 
as the Messiah, as the prophet. Right. He, he had the right. virgin and birth. And this is a strange thing. Yeah. So we yeah. should definitely be yeah. trying to sort that out. Yeah, I understand this man's point of view when it comes to the three in one. So it's like Trinity makes sense to Christians, but it might not make sense to other religion. That's how I'll put it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.